Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Dr. Ali, my name is Muhammad Azri Hazik bin Hasnan from AS 2454D. Will be a presenter about a subtopic on how Beirut chemical explosion happened. The Lebanese government has resigned amid growing public anger following a devastating explosion in Beirut on 4 August that killed at least 200 people and injured around 5,000 others. Humans all around the globe started speculating on the causes as soon as footage of the catastrophe circulated on social media. According to Howes 2020, a fire began in the vicinity before the explosion, resulting in a cloud of white smoke and minor explosions. A white condensation cloud stretched out in the sphere from the location as the ammonium nitrate stockpiles detonated, followed by the large plume of red-orange smoke rising from the hangar. Several chemists on Twitter recognized the hue as an indication of nitrogen gases, nitrogen di dioxide gases, which may be created by incomplete ammonium nitrate decomposition. Others based their estimate on video footage, estimating the detonation velocity of the explosion to be around 3,000 meters per second, which is also consistent with an ammonium nitrate explosion. If the explosion is relating with chemistry, hear how it happened. It is stable under normal condition, but you can do things to it that will cause it to be misbehaved. The main trigger is an external heat sources like fire. And fire is a frequent trigger. It is the heat of the fire that warms up the ammonium nitrate that can become a problem. If it is heated by a large heat source like a fire, the ammonium nitrate will begin to decompose and that decomposition can be mild and harmless, or it can be catastrophic. The differences between the two is whether or not the ammonium nitrate is pushed together in a stockpile. Think of it like a bonfire with a bunch of logs. When you build up that bonfire, those logs are trapping the heat, which accelerates the burning and creating a huge fire. Whereas if you spread them out, the heat escapes to the atmosphere to the atmosphere harmlessly. The same thing is true with the ammonium nitrate if it is loaded up in, for example, what they call as super sacks. If you pile them up with no airflow in between, then any heat that gets generated during the, uh, during the composition is trapped and can't get out from the places. The heat raises the temperature and accelerate the decomposition and there's nothing to stop it. And detonation happens. The researchers discovered that endothermic dissociation to ammonia and nitric acid is the initial stage in the thermal breakdown of ammonium nitrate using the reaction 1, 2, and 3 and the previous research. The following response is ionic between 200 and 290 degrees Celsius with the production of nitrogen dioxide ion being the rate limiting step. So, um, ammonium nitrate produces ammonia and nitric acid and nitric acid produce nitrogen dioxide and hydroxide or nitric acid produce nitrogen dioxide ion and hydroperoxyl plus two electron When energy is given to ammonium nitrate, such as from the fire, the molecule becomes unstable based on Howes 2020. Since ammonium nitrate includes nitrogen in two different oxidation states, the species undergo an exothermic process. The nitrate serves as an oxidant, while the ammonium functions as a reducing agent. 
the primary product of perfectly pure reaction are dinitrogen, water, and a small amount of oxygen. However, side products such as nitrogen dioxide are frequent. Because of all the products are gaseous, a rapid significant rise in pressure occurs, which then travel outward at supersonic speeds, resulting in detonation in beards. Assalamualaikum. Hi, my name is Nur Zawiyah binti Marzuki. I will be discussing on why the explosion at the Beirut port happened. Why the explosion at the Beirut port happened? The huge amount of ammonium nitrate present at the location was the primary reason of the explosion. According to the Lebanese Prime Minister Hassan Diab, the ammonium nitrate stored in a hazardous manner was the cause of the explosion. Professor Taufik Yap Yun Hing claimed that due to the chemicals were improperly stored for too long, the chemicals start to release heat, and when this heat rose above 210 degrees Celsius, it will eventually decompose a massive amount of oxygen. So this huge amount of oxygen, when combined even with a small fire, will result to a catastrophic explosion. That is exactly what happened where a fire was reported at the Beirut port. However, it was unclear when or how the fire began. According to the routers on Wednesday, the fire started at adjoining uh, warehouse 9 and spread to warehouse 12 where the ammonium nitrates were stored. And some people said that the fireworks may have started the fire. All in all, the fire is what triggered the ready to detonate ammonium nitrates to explode. The trails of the explosion begins nearly seven years ago when a frail ship, the Roses, carrying 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrates happened to dock at the Beirut port due to so-called technical problems. It was not actually due to technical problems when the former captain of the ship reported that it was stopped due to unpaid port charges. And because of that, the ship was prohibited from departing and later results to the abandonment of the ship by its owners. So on court order, the dangerous cargo was transferred to uh, one of the warehouses at the airport. And it was left lying there without any further intervention until seven years later. So when a huge amount of these chemicals was left for an extended period of time without uh, proper care, it begins to deteriorate. The ignorance of the Lebanese government is believed to also be blamed for the explosion occurring. People are baffled as to why the explosive chemicals were kept at the airport and that raises questions as to whether the Lebanese government fully appreciate the danger posed by the ammonium nitrates. Despite the authorities sent a few letters warning about the risk of the chemicals and pleading the government to re-export the chemicals to somewhere else, still no action was taken and that have led to the death of 207 innocent people. Assalamualaikum, my name is Nur Azra binti Azahari and I will be discussing on what is ammonium nitrate in chemical perspective. What is ammonium nitrate in chemical perspective? So, ammonium nitrate with a chemical formula of NH4NO3 is a white crystalline solid salt consists of ammonium ions and nitrate ions that are highly soluble in water. Ammonium nitrate is formed by the reaction of ammonia gas with nitric acid in an exothermic reaction 
to develop a concentrated ammonium nitrate liquid solution. It is considered hygroscopic as it exhibits hygroscopic property which enables moisture to be absorbed from environment. Thus, ammonium nitrate shall be secured from moisture during storage and transportation. Ammonium nitrate also can exist in different forms such as crystalline form, pearl or granular form and also saturated aqueous solution depending on its use. Ammonium nitrate is generally used in agriculture as high nitrogen fertilizer because it produces a reasonably high content of nutrients. It is also a crucial element in explosives in the quarrying and mining industry for blasting rocks and acts as an oxidizing agent that may explode if exposed to heat. Due to its hazardous properties, ammonium nitrate must be stored in a dry and well-ventilated area. Studies have shown that the composition of ammonium nitrate occurs at a temperature of 200 to 300 degrees Celsius by ionic mechanism and results in production of nitrous oxide gases and steam. There are some factors that affecting the rate of decomposition of ammonium nitrate such as pH, temperature, presence of other substances and condition of heat and mass transfer with environment. However, the decomposition process can be retarded by compounds such as urea, phosphates, carbonates and sulfates. Ammonium nitrate does not burn on its own but it can trigger fire in the absence of oxygen when exposed to combustible materials. It is also a highly reactive chemical and is incompatible with some organic and inorganic compounds. Exposure to contaminants of acidic substances that are lower in pH, chlorides and metals such as nickel, chromium and cobalt increase the risk of detonation as well as zinc and lead powdered metals when combined with ammonium nitrate. Lastly, ammonium nitrate stimulates detonations when exposed to extreme shock or subjected to high temperature with confinement. Titanium and aluminium metals increase sensitivity of explosion when mixed with ammonium nitrate. Explosions of large quantities can occur due to the explosion of a slight amount of ammonium nitrate in a confined space. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Nur Amira Shaira binti Junaidi and I will discussing about the classification of ammonium nitrate in hazardous waste. So now I'm going to explain about the classification of ammonium nitrate in hazardous waste. Before that, what is hazardous waste? According to the study, hazardous waste is happening when their chemical activity or toxic is producing by themselves. Hazardous waste is also defined as any waste for falling within the categories of waste listed in the first schedule of environment quality, Schedules Waste Regulations 2005. So, according to according to Department of Occupational Safety and Health Team, there are two categories to differentiate the categories of hazardous waste. First, based on physicochemical properties, and the second is based on health effect. There are five hazard categories for physicochemical properties, which are explosive, explosive, oxidizing, flammable extremely flammable and highly flammable. For the health effect, there are also five categories which are corrosive, irritated, harmful, toxic and very toxic. So basically, ammonia nitrate is, categ is categorized based on oxidizing from the physicochemical properties since ammonia nitrate is an oxidizing chemical. This type of chemical has high exothermic reaction when interact with other chemicals. Other research also state that this oxidizing chemical were considered as oxidizing due to unstable reactive, which means that the ability to undergo a chemical change under high pressure or temperature. So, 
all the chemicals that categorize in, oxidi in, in oxidizing will provide their oxygen and produce the combustion. The explosion of ammonium nitrate that happened at Beirut is caused by 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate at the site for several years. In Malaysia, ammonium nitrate was classified as dangerous goods and fall under class 5 oxidizing substance and organic peroxides of International Maritime Dangerous Goods IMDG code. The purpose of this regulation because most of oxidizing chemical produce significant of hazards that come from their combustibility, volatility and potential on creating bonfire. So, different country has different regulations in order to classify ammonium nitrate. In United States, NFPA 400 Hazardous Materials Code is standard regulations that widely used for ammonium nitrate where to give a basic protection for the storage, use and handling of hazardous materials. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Azizul Hazi bin Abdul Halim. I'm going to present about signs of explosion section in this presentation. In the previous slides, the chemical aspect of ammonium nitrate has been explained along with its classification based on hazardous waste definition. Since the Beirut explosion involves severity to human health and many other, many other aspects, we will delve into some of basic information about explosion according to science reference books and sources. Uh, the other human health and other aspects are going to be explained in upcoming slide by my colleagues. According to Rusak and Geyser, explosive substance reacts rapidly in the presence of an oxidizer to produce gaseous products accompanied with liberation of heat and local pressure buildup. Explosive could be classified into primary explosive or secondary explosive based on its reaction trigger. Another way of classification of explosive is by observing its attributes such as its chemical stability, sensitivity to ignition, sensitivity to detonation, the velocity of detonation, and primarily explosive strength itself. Oran and Williams has stated that generally explosion refers to any type of scenario in which energy is injected into a system faster than it can be smoothly equilibrated through the system or in other words the energy is introduced faster than a dynamical time scale. Ignition of explosive materials leads to an occurrence of explosion. Oran and William has underlined the explosion based on classical view and modern view. From this explanation, explosion has been divided into detonation or deflagration. Detonation is an explosion of supersonic scale accompanied with large pressure increase with small volume decrease while deflagration is an explosion of subsonic scale accompanied with large volume increase with small pressure decreases. According to classical view, detonation and deflagration is understood using steady flow and geometrically unhindered environment assumption. Meanwhile, in more modern view of explosion, uh, the view has been expanded into planar explosion and also explosion in porous media and as far as explosion in astral bodies. Famous explanation in modern view include by Zeldovic von Neumann and Doring using the Z and D model to explain the explosion happened. Another commonly used explosion model is DDT, that is deflagration to detonation transition explosion. 
The incident in Beirut port is classified as DDT explosion, in which low explosives such as ammonium nitrate has been involved. Vast amount of ammonium nitrate has been ignited in confined space, releasing high intensity of shockwaves across the city. The explosion's intensity has been analyzed by a team from Stanford University to reach as high as one tenth of Hiroshima nuclear bombing. Up to this day, no official environmental impact assessment has been completed except that involving physical and human life loss. By using reference on similar incidents happened previously across the world caused by ammonium nitrate, we will relate the severity of the ammonium nitrate to environment in aftermath of the explosion. Hello and Assalamualaikum Dr. Ali. My name is Sashaki Zufairi bin Sanale and I will be discussing about what are the similar incidents that occur. On the 21st of September 2001, 20 to 120 tons of ammonium nitrate residue inside a fertilizer plant in Toulouse, France exploded. According to the French Ministry of Sustainable Department, the explosion in the Toulouse incident can be felt several kilometers away corresponding to a 3.4 magnitude on the Richter scale, or equivalent to 20 to 40 tons of TNT. Following the detonation of a pollutant, nitric acid, ammonia, nitrogen dioxide, and nitrous oxide are formed in the, in the atmosphere. Nitric acid was also released into the nearby river as a result from the explosion. The Garan River is polluted with around 9 tons of ammoniated solutions which kills the aquatic life. With a high pH in the river, the chemical, sh the chemical equilibrium shifts to a non-ionized form of ammonia which is highly hazardous to fish. Another incident that is similar to the Beirut explosion is Tianjin explosion in China. A warehouse in the port of Tianjin in northern China experienced two major explosions. The first one was powerful as a 3 tons of TNT had detonated. The second one was equivalent to 21 tons of detonating. This second explosion was so significant that astronauts orbiting the Earth on the ISS could see it from space. The explosion had an environmental impact as well, since the crater formed by the explosion filled with toxic water. The hazardous chemical sodium, sodium cyanide as well as pollutant in the concentration with over 300 times over the illegal limit were found in the water samples obtained from the area. A huge amount of nitrate such as ammonium nitrate, potassium nitrate was also released by the explosion. All the three incidents including Beirut had a similar cause of explosion, ammonium nitrate. So what can be learned from these three disasters? First, Oversight is critical for maintaining safety. This tragedy highlights the importance of having oversight from government, agency or other recognized body that develop laws and ensure firms to follow them in order to avoid disaster like this. While this regulation may seem to make their job harder at times or put undue stress to the company, the reality is that they are entirely necessary. Secondly, workers must be aware of hazards and have hazmat training. Workers will need to be trained on how to safely handle, store, and ship these items. They must not only be on properly trained, but they must also be aware of the chemicals they are working with. Employers must keep a chemical inventory list that lists every hazardous chemical in the workplace, how much of it there is, and where it kept. And the third one is hazmat containing facilities require emergency preparedness and response plans. Consideration of the risk of an emergency should begin with a preventative strategy as well as an emergency response plan. Consider how staff should react in the case of a hazardous material igniting or leaking in the most efficient and effective way possible. Assalamualaikum, my name is Afaf Nabila Binti Fauzi and I will be presenting on the after effect of Beirut explosion. 
Following the ammonium nitrate explosion in Beirut, there are several after effects. Lebanese authorities reported that 2,750 tons of industrial chemical had been stored for six years at Beirut port without safety measures, including ammonium nitrate. As we know, ammonium nitrate is a stable compound when in solid or molten form. However, when it is exposed to high temperature under confinement, it can explode. This led to the most recent case in Beirut that reported that the stockpile of chemical exploded, killing more than 150 people, injuring thousands and leaving about a quarter of a million people homeless. Other than that, World Health Organization reported that the health infrastructure and medical supplies were severely damaged. Due to this, there are many injured people that are left untreated and for some cases have led to death without being treated. The following are the after effect of Beirut explosion on Beirut's economy. According to the article, the explosion destroyed the port of Beirut, which is the country's main entry for goods imported via sea, covering 80% of Lebanon's shipping and trade. Due to this incident, the Beirut economy suffers a critical blow. Other than that, a strong currency depletion of nearly 300,000 inhabitants are main risk factors affecting the purchasing power of households. This is because most of the houses nearby the Beirut port are damaged due to the blast. The effect of the explosion on the Beirut's economy and supply chains worsened and as a result, there are further increase in the number of the poor and extreme poor, which is 45% of the population according to the World Bank. According to World Health Organization, 150,000 of the 300,000 people estimated to be affected by the explosion, including children, women, senior citizens, are in urgent needs for shelter, food, and basic needs. This is because most of their house are destroyed due to the explosion, so they don't have any shelter. Other than that, uh, be, due to the explosion, some of the countries have banned ammonium nitrate to be used as fertilizer because it has been used by militant bomb makers. This affects Beirut's economy greatly as Beirut is one of the ammonium nitrate supplier. My name is Nordiana Binti Nordin and I'm presenting about contaminant of ammonium nitrate. Two thousand twenty in world history, Lebanon's capital witnessed one of the most intense non nuclear explosions involved ammonium nitrate about two point five kilometers away in the city spot. In very long time of storing, huge amount of ammonium nitrate will absorb moisture and makes particles stay together into a large stone. It can trigger an explosion as it unprotected to serious heat temperatures. After the explosion, air may consist of nitrates, sulfates, lead carbon, ammonia, sodium chloride, and mineral dust. It will include a complex mixture of organic and inorganic suspended substances in the air. Chemical species are produced in the gas phase such as nitric acid gas, white ammonia, nitrate mist, nitrous oxide, and water vapor. Ammonium nitrate entirely 
decomposes, allowing the four gases to combine and generate water vapor, nitrogen, and toxic ground fumes, primarily composed of nitrogen oxide. The most hazardous nitrogen oxide is involving nitric oxide and nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen oxide usually affects the lower respiratory tract, swelling tissue in the throat and have burning sensation in chest congestion, as well as obstructions of upper respiratory areas. The respiratory system can be affected by nitrogen dioxide in several different ways. In the distant areas, it first destroys alveolar structure by converting it to nitric and nitrous acids. Second, by creating free radicals, which cause protein oxidation, lipid peroxidation, and cell membrane damage. Another high risk of COVID-19 infection can make the health condition of Beirut residents even worse. Nitric acid corrosive gas can trigger disturbance to the skin, eyes, mucous membrane, bronchitis, and pneumonitis. White ammonia nitrate mist exposures can consume burns irritation, consume burns nose, throat, and lung bordering, cerebral pain, and also lips cancer. Dangerous good segregation rule where certain classes of cargo should be stored far apart with strict adherence to segregation requirements and procedures set by the Port Authority, PKA, and Occupational Safety and Health Department. Fertilizer and agrochemical should be kept in well-ventilated storage to mitigate any gaseous substance and air bondage. Routine inspection is needed to detect and to prevent spillage and contamination. Scientific Community Duty in Environment Assessment Companies that handle, store, or require disposal of high hazardous chemicals and waste on a routine basis should take a serious discussion on the importance of strong environmental health and safety program. Scientific Community Task, which is diverse network of interdisciplinary scientists, is to analyze and prepare the report about the long-term effects on environment. There are three scientists who are present during the explosion and now currently researching the aftermath of their tragedy in Beirut. Salim Adib is a consultant of Lebanese Ministry of Public Health and Epidemiologist at the American University of Beirut. And now he researched the development and causes of uncommunicable disease such as cancer as well as the public health prevention approach. Next is Sajad Saliba is an atmospheric chemist and the director of American University of Beirut Nature Conservation Facility, an academic research center under the provost office. Her study are focused on air pollution and aerosol chemical transformations. Rola Husni is the head of Infectious Disease Division and Infection Control Program. She is in charge of infection control in five hospitals and works directly with MOPH. The explosion which damaged Lebanon's main port worsened the country's COVID-19 outbreak. Other than that, main response activities by Lebanese Red Cross include being rushed to the scene of explosion to assist life-saving efforts. Team rescued and treat injured people as well as providing life saving blood. More than 80,000 people receive food, drink, masks, and other necessities. Over 5,700 clients receive crisis counseling from experienced team members to satisfy their emotional needs. 
Today, the focus moved from saving life to assisting those who have been affected in their recovery. To get better understanding, this Lebanese Red Cross visited up to 27,000 impacted families. The Lebanese Red Cross has currently provided cash grants to over 1,200 families, allowing them to choose how to fulfill their individual needs. The American Red Cross has donated more than $764,000 to help those who were affected by the Lebanon blast. The Constitution has added International Red Cross and Red Crescent Network in meeting the immediate needs of those who have been harmed by the explosion.